We do thank them for taking the time out of their busy schedules. So um, the needs, sorry, those two entities then um, produce the needs assessment in the initial plan that, that you have before you today. I should mention, and I believe Christine has done this already, that um, the plan is submitted to the Ministry of Education for its information, um, not for its approval, which is not a typical way of doing things, but I think is, is very much appreciated. Um, it, it does appreciate that uh, local folks perhaps know um, what's best for their communities. Well, the plan was supposed to be initially submitted by May 31st. There has been an extension um, till the end of September, but since we were ready to go in the county of Bruce, um, might as well keep the momentum going. Okay. okay. Whoops, I've gone too far. My apologies. Okay, the methodology we used, as you can see from this slide, um, was very robust and took into account of a lot of different models and a lot of methods. Um, we had over a thousand parents and caregivers respond to the survey uh, that we put out. Now that is a, a Bruce and Gray County total, but about half from each county. So that is exceptional um, that we were able to hear from 500 parents. And we owe a lot of those, that thanks to our, our local school board colleagues because they did allow us to um, go into the Let's Learn kindergarten registration sessions. And the early year staff had iPads um, available that parents were able, and laptops, so that parents were able to complete the survey in a couple of minutes while they were there at the school. And that also provided us with a good opportunity to get a broad cross-section of families as well. So we got families who perhaps may be living with low income and other families who perhaps have a higher family income. And it also allowed us to get families from all across the County of Bruce. So we do feel fairly confident that um, the results that we have are, are fairly representative of the parents. We also hosted two community forums, um, one in Walkerton and one in Owen Sound. About 50 people attended both of those forums, and that was for service, service providers. Um, unfortunately, Mother Nature um, impacted us in Walkerton, so we had a number of people that weren't able to attend because of the snow, but that it was still a very valuable and worthwhile um, in, information session. I also conducted um, telephone interviews with 18 key informants, um, so individuals such as, as Kelly, um, and the medical officer of health, the executive director, directors rather from um, various community agencies, uh, your museum, your library, um, the school boards, et cetera, et cetera. So we uh, also gleaned a lot of valuable information from them. The Let's Grow Committee is a committee of service providers um, from the County of Bruce and the County of Gray, and they too provided valuable input um, into the service gaps and helped us identify where things had improved or changed or stayed the same over the past decade or so. A focus group was held with the OEYC Service System Management Committee, another big title, and that actually is the organizations and agencies from whom uh, your county and the County of Gray purchase Ontario Early Years Center services. Um, in the case of the County of Bruce, that's exclusively with Keystone Child and Family um, Services, whereas the County of Gray has a number of other organizations that they to purchase service from. Um, and then lastly, we did review a number of statistical reports and service data, um, some of them again produced by the Bruce Gray Community Foundation, your economic development folks, um, and of course using census data and other similar resources. 
on the basis of all of that input from all of those individuals, um, we did identify a number of strengths. And I think it was very important to identify those strengths because moving forward, why reinvent the wheel? If there's something that's already working really well in the county of Bruce, let's build on that and move forward. And you can see from um, the four boxes up on the slide in front of you that the hub model of service delivery was very valuable. And that um, model consists of the main um, OEYC site here in Walkerton, as well as the satellite sites that are located in Concordon, Port Elgin, and Wyerton. And then from there, there's a number of outreach sites in some of the smaller communities um, around the county. So that was viewed as very positive and allows us um, to have families to have ready access to those services. Collaboration among service providers was also um, highly regarded. The variety of programs and services that are available for children, their parents and caregivers, and the rural outreach model of service delivery. And just a, a sentence about that, that's not only unique to the Ontario Early Years Centre, but also a number of service provider agencies also take their programs to the families, so that that does help to overcome some of those barriers that geography and, and transportation can provide. Where there's strengths, unfortunately, there's gaps. Um, and for, for um, all of you, I'm sure, around, around the table today, these gaps are probably not unique um, to earlier services. Um, we very much need to ensure that programs are relevant for our um, diverse communities that make the County of Bruce their home. So the Indigenous residents that live off reserve, our Amish and Mennonite residents, francophone residents as well. Um, a number of our um, service providers and, and parents and key informants identified the limited availability of mental health services as, as a challenge. Um, it's questionable how much the early year centers can do to resolve that, but they can definitely be part of the solution. Um, so these would be services not only for children, but also for their families and parents who may have some um, struggles. Um, I said in the earlier slide that um, programs and services for children was a strength, and now we see it here as a gap. Um, that happens sometimes, but uh, in, this, in this instance, it really is pertaining to some specific um, programs and services that folks thought um, could be expanded upon. There used to be lending libraries, for instance, that would lend um, resources and, and books and equipment and toys and other educational things, but they have become limited in the past few years, for example. Um, licensed child care, I, I don't want that to, to stand out as a, um, a huge service gap there are, because there's a very, um, a very excellent system of licensed child care, home-based and center-based in the County of Bruce. But you'll see from what's a, on the slide um, in front of you that there are some particular aspects of that that I think we can always do better at. Um, the lack of RECEs, and I apologize for that acronym, that's Registered Early Childhood Educators, um, has repeatedly been identified as a gap. Um, it's become magnified a bit since the um, full day kindergarten started um, because a lot of the um, early childhood educators have gone to work for the school boards now where they can um, earn better wages. Um, but it is a huge problem across the province. There's just not enough, the colleges aren't putting out enough staff, or sorry, enough educated individuals and those that are in the field often face low wages and so may not stay in the field um, for an extended period of time. A few challenges and barriers um, that were identified. Um, 
maybe, maybe not. Those of you who are parents or grandparents um, may appreciate the fact that just having a busy family life um, often comes in the way of taking advantage of, of programs that are available. And that actually was the number one challenge identified by parents. And I'll show you um, a slide to that effect uh, coming up in a moment. Transportation, again, is not something that's new. Um, it's the lack of public transportation. It's the um, ability to access a vehicle, um, to put gas in it, to have snow tires, to pay the insurance, etc. Provincial funding um, is also a challenge and has been um, for the earlier centers. Since they were first introduced in 2002 and 2003, there has not been an increase in provincial funding. Um, so that's um, quite amazing, but true. Uh, and that's why I think everyone has got their fingers crossed that when this new funding model becomes known and the County of Bruce's allocation becomes known, that perhaps uh, we can make up for, for some lost time in terms of uh, provincial funding. Other programs as well have also seen um, their funding flatlined over the past number of years, so that puts challenges on partnerships and, and things like that. It's also been challenging to, to engage at-risk families, and, and that's in quotations. Um, typically, it's the families that we want to reach the most, um, be they single parents, be they families living with low income, be they families who are isolated um, out in the community. So that's something that, that we all continue to need to come up with creative solutions for. This is just a, a graphic that depicts the barriers that were reported by parents. My apologies that it, it may not be um, easy to read. Um, the light blue um, bar graph is adult child interactive play groups. So that's the programs where parents and children are there together. Um, and then the darker blue is other children's programs. So you can see really 40% um, or so of our respondents did not face any barriers, and then we had about 35% who said family life was too busy, right? So it's hard to overcome that one, um, but again, it, it, it'll take some creative thought, and I'm, I'm sure staff and their partners are up, up to the challenge. Just wanted to show you this as well. We, I'd mentioned transportation um, being a bit of a barrier. So this question in the, the parent survey was asking parents their one-way travel time to various activities such as groceries and childcare and recreation, leisure, etc. So the good news that we can take away from this slide is that the vast majority of parents are able to access an early years program within a 20 minute drive from their home, which is one of the goals that staff set out way back in 2002. So, um, you know, it would be wonderful if there was sufficient funding to get that 20 minutes down to 15, but at least let's hope we can keep it at 20 minutes going forward. So on the basis of all of that, and that's kind of a, a high level of the needs assessment, um, we came up with an initial plan as required by the ministry, and you can see the six broad categories up on the slide here in front of you. So the location, sites, and hours, um, once the funding allocation is known, then staff can, um, and once, sorry, take that back, um, once the tw 2016 census information becomes known, and it is being released over the course of 2017, um, we'll have a better idea where best to position the outreach and satellite sites. Unfortunately, we were working with um, earlier census data, so it really wasn't that helpful. We need to know now where the children are living and where their families are living. And hopefully, over the course of um, the remainder of this calendar year, we'll, we'll know that and then go, go back and look. Um, community dynamics um, is something I know that, that you're all familiar with. There are newcomers moving to the County of Bruce, whether they're coming from other countries around the world or whether they're coming here from across 
Ontario and Canada for employment opportunities. But we really need to, to keep a pulse on what's happening there. Um, similarly, the accommodation um, review process that's being undertaken by Blue Water District School Board will also um, has the potential to impact upon community dynamics um, moving forward in the next you know, five or, or so years. I've talked a little bit about diversity in an earlier slide, so I won't go into too much detail here, but again, that's very much something that, that has to be addressed. Um, the service delivery model, um, I alluded earlier on that the county has a purchase of service agreement with Keystone um, to deliver the majority of the early year services out of the Port Algon Wyerton area. Um, given the, the lack of funding increases in the last 15 or so years, um, it really didn't seem, op seem opportune to review that relationship at all because there was no way to kind of move things around too much. So again, it's, it's just something um, that's been bookmarked um, to have a look at once that funding allocation is known. The relationship with the County of Grey um, is something as well over the next 6 to 12 months that will be explored. I'd, I'd mentioned that the earlier centres were aligned with provincial ridings. Um, that will not be the case for child and family centres. There will be one per um, kind of upper tier municipality. So therefore there will be something very distinct for the County of Bruce and something distinct for the County of Grey. So it's a matter of kind of um, changing that relationship then. There will no longer be a co-lead relationship. There will be two separate, um, two very distinct and separate. But that doesn't mean there can't still be a relationship. It will just be a, a different relationship. And then obviously partnerships, um, you know, with, with the health unit, with Keystones, with community living, with school boards, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, we all do our best work when we work together, so I, I think that we, we do want to keep those partnerships strong. Okay, almost done. Um, so next steps um, is somewhat similar to the initial plan steps, only these are actually things that will occur in the more immediate future. Um, but again, it's once the funding um, approach is known, once the outcome measurement framework is known, once the updated program guidelines are known, then these um, five activities that you see on the slide will be kind of the immediate focus of attention um, of staff so that, that the transition to the new model is um, um, as easy and seamless um, as, as it can be. So that's my formal presentation and thank you again very much for the opportunity and my apologies if I took a wee too much time. Thank you, Beth. Questions from committee? Mike? Thanks, Mr. Warren. I, I go, one of your first slides talked about the funding formula and then uh, framework for uh, outcomes. And I just wonder what those are. Is there a, a <coughs> often when you mention that, I first of all think, oh, we're going to tie those outcomes to the funding formula. That's the first question I ask. And it sometimes isn't, doesn't work that way, I don't think. But the outcomes, I mean, is there a set of criteria that you have already that you will measure to say, yes, we're being successful here and, and we're not being, need to change? <clears throat> Through you, Chair. Um, we are waiting on the framework and we are waiting on the, the funding uh, formula for the early years. Um, I was just in a meeting with provincial staff this week and they said it's imminently to arrive. Um, so hopefully by the end of June we'll know better of that. Um, we did see some examples of what the outcomes could look like and as, as Beth uh, discussed it would change from a focus of um, counting activities to actual um, outcomes for children and family. Um, so it might look something like measuring how the relationship with the parent and child has improved because of their involvement, um, which means a lot more evaluation. Um, so we're having very serious conversations with the province about what our capacity will be to uh, respond to their outcome criteria based on the funding that we receive. That's already quite tight budgets. Um, 
so you know once we have the actual allocation we'll be able to understand better you know what our capacity is to respond to what the new framework is as well too but both of those pieces of information we're waiting on um, the other piece and as you as you see with the other uh, report that I brought forward today they did change our funding guideline and allocation around our child care portion of the portfolio um, what we're still waiting on is the federal contribution so the pieces of money that we are aware of to date are all provincial contributions. Um, and so the province and the federal government are still working together. And of course, you know, in the federal budget, there was a major commitment uh, to the early years as well too. So we just don't know what that will all look like. But hopefully, um, when we next meet again in July, we'll have more information. I don't know if you have anything to add. Mm -hmm. It's just just encouraging I, when you did mention that you're that they're developing these these this framework for measuring and that you're having some input to it because often sometimes you you don't get any input to that and it's and th that did make me think of one more thing in that regard they are looking uh, for our input onto how they can best support us and so we mm -hmm. had some really frank conversations <laughs> about um, the types of things that would be helpful if uh, the province was able to spearhead rather than 47 different service managers yeah. coming up with solutions so for example the um, branding and awareness building campaigns around the new programming will be done at a provincial level um, so that all 47 aren't needing to um, put resources into those pieces separately. Kelly, did you have something? Director McDonald made the comment I was going to. It's pretty bad when you're thinking the same way, isn't it? <laughs> Any other comments, questions? Thank you very much for your presentation. Okay, next up. Okay, and so uh, the recommendation before you with regard to um, the Ontario Early Years Child and Family Centre Needs Assessment and Initial Plan um, is we're looking for your um, approval today and then we will go ahead and submit the plan um, to the Ministry of Education. Um, as Beth had highlighted earlier, um, some of the committee members and community partners as well as staff that have been involved in the development of this very lengthy plan are here today. So I wish to also share my thanks um, with everyone for the tremendous amount of work that's gone into this over about the last six um, months. Uh, and so we have uh, Brenda Wilton, Children's Services Manager here today. And actually uh, today will be uh, Brenda's last formal meeting with us well too as she approaches her retirement. And uh, Kathy Johnson, our earlier supervisor. And then Brenda, can I ask you to do the introductions along the back as well too? Excellent. Okay, so there's a staff recommendation. Do I have a mover and seconder? Mike, Milt, any further discussions? All those in favor, opposed if any, that is carried. Thank you. Next up, there's enough, another staff recommendation. Do I have a mover and seconder? Robert, Janice, any further discussions? All those in favor, opposed if any, that's carried. Thank you. All right, information items. We were l left off at, yeah, okay, Let's see. Go ahead. So um, information 
uh, items D and E are re-releases of our um, expressions of interest for the community delivered oops, sorry for the community delivered rent supplement pilot and also the new rental and so um, we've had some conversations with our partners in the community um, and there is some renewed interest in those and so we've re-released them um, and we'll be accepting applications for those and the final report is um, with regards to the wait list and happy to entertain questions if you had any on any of those any questions on the information items, comments? Hearing none. Motion to adjourn. Paul, Robert, thank you.